Where did BDO darts go wrong? Everyone wonders, but no one knows the reason. Today, we reveal to you the secrets of BDO darts and why it went completely wrong. In the world of sports, we have stories of winning and losing that are remembered for a long time. But what happens when money problems, questionable choices, and not being able to change cause a once successful group to fail? Get ready, because we're going to hear about how the British darts organization, which people also call BDO, came to an end after 47 busy years. But before we get to the sad part, let's go back to a clear January morning in 1973. On January 7th, 1973, the British Darts organization started with people clinking glasses and darts hitting the board. Ollie Croft, who had a big idea, led the way. It soon became really important in the darts world. Three years later, another darts group, the World Darts Federation, started too. A big movement came when the BDO had its first BDO World Professional Darts Championship in 1978. This event became famous and had different names like Lakeside and the Embassy. The the championship made darts history. However, when the 90s began, things started to change. A group of 19 important players, who had all been world champions before, started to disagree. They created the World Darts Council, which later became the Professional Darts Corporation. The PDC had a plan. Change how the sport makes money and make its tournaments even more important. In 1993, something really big happened in the world of darts. The last big world championship was played in the BDO place. John Lowe won the top prize without knowing that he would be the last big world champion. This caused a big separation between BDO and PDC, leading to two different world championships and two groups of darts players. In another country, the Netherlands, Raymond van Barneveld became really famous and made darts really popular. He won the Big World Professional Darts Championship in 1997, 1998, and 1999. And this made a lot of people in the Netherlands excited about darts. People in the Netherlands watched BDO darts on TV, but this couldn't stop the problems that were coming. People were not happy in BDO. BDO was offering less prize money, which made players leave BDO and go to PDC instead. This made BDO's future look bad because players wanted more money and attention. They didn't know it, but these big changes were the start of the end for BDO. Don't forget to hit the bullseye so you never miss out on any of our amazing darts videos. While everything was going wrong, there was some small hope. In 2009, BDO got a really good offer. Barry Hearn, the important leader of PDC, gave BDO a big offer of £1 million. He said he would also give them another million pounds. This seemed like a way for BDO to get better. But like a sad part in a story by Shakespeare, Ollie Croft, the person who started BDO, said no to the offer. People who loved darts watched and waited, but the choice was made, and they would later wish they had taken the offer. The year 2011 came with a feeling of big changes. Before the yearly gathering of BDO members, a group of unhappy people started speaking up more. Players, officials and workers all shared their unhappiness with how things were going, especially with the actions of the people on the board. The start of this loud complaint was about how TV tournaments were managed and finding new sponsors. The unhappiness grew into a big change, a vote where almost all the board members were removed, even the founder, Ollie Croft. The strong base of the organisation was shaken, its main supporters moved by the very people who had made it. On the other hand, PDC continued to get more professional. The appeal of the sports main group became really strong. The start of the development tour and the challenge tour in PDC gave new players more ways to try, making the BDO stage less important. The shine of the BDO tournament faded and they weren't shown on TV as much. At the same time, BDO's way of promoting also wasn't working well. By 2018, people in the BDO were speaking out. Famous players like Ross Montgomery, Tony O'Shea and Glenn Durant talked about their problems, saying that the efforts to make people interested weren't good and the rules were too strict, stopping BDO players from joining PDC tournaments. In the middle of all this trouble, a big change happened. The BDO, trying to save itself, said that BDO players could join PDC tournaments without any rules. The big choice was about their idea of darts for all, wanting to remove the things that kept the two groups apart. This change wasn't just for men, but women too got a chance. This choice was really important, like a crossroads, a path that could help the BDO get better or make it even worse. After 2018, a new period started, 
but it had many problems. The organisation that used to be popular had trouble getting TV rights, finding places for tournaments, and getting sponsors. In 2019, there were doubts about the future of the BDO World Trophy. Luckily, a place for the tournament was found just in time, but the happiness didn't last long. Many important people like Richard Ashdown and four referees left their positions, making the BDO even weaker. The World Masters Tournament was almost boycotted because of problems with how it was organised. The tournament's fairness was questioned because of a strange draw that had fake names and missed qualified players. People criticised the BDO a lot. Even someone who used to play in the World Finals, Andy Hamilton, expressed his unhappiness on Twitter. Then, on December 1st, 2019, the World Darts Federation stopped working with the BDO. This happened because of the issues during the 2019 World Masters. The Federation didn't want to be connected with the BDO anymore, which was really bad for the struggling BDO. The BDO's money situation got worse. People didn't know how the prize money for the 2020 BDO World Championship would be given out. This was a problem because the famous lakeside venue was not going to be used for the event. During the World Cup, it was revealed that the BDO owed a lot of money to a Dutch company that was supposed to broadcast the World Masters tournament. As things got worse, people paid attention to the promised prize money. Just three days after the deadline, only a small part of the money that was promised was given out. The winner, Wayne Warren, got much less than the £100,000 he was supposed to, and this made him and others feel very disappointed and upset. In the middle of all this confusion, Des Jacklin, the head of the BDO who started leading in August 2018, decided to step down in March 2020. People accused him of having conflicting interests, and he became a central person in the organisation's money problems. The BDO's top management was in ruins, a result of the difficult situation that had been getting worse for years. Unexpectedly, in April 2020, Des Jacklin returned as the BDO's leader. People in the darting community hoped that he could guide the BDO through the challenges of the coronavirus pandemic. But it seemed that even a leader who was once admired couldn't fix the serious problems that had damaged the organisation's base. By June 2020, the business side of the BDO was facing a huge debt of £468,000. A few days later, the unavoidable happened. British Darts Organisation Enterprises Limited was officially declared bankrupt. This meant that BDO tournaments on TV were over. The special events that were once shown on TV, the BDO World Trophy, the World Masters and the BDO World Championship disappeared, creating a gap that could never be filled. As the organisation's control weakened, the counties began looking for something else. The United Kingdom Darts Association and Tri-Nations became new options. It was clear that the BDO's main role was now only overseeing local darts. In September 2020, the story came to a climax. All the counties left in the BDO and joined the UKDA. The BDO's last strong point fell apart, and its once powerful influence became only faint sounds in the breeze. In the end, the British darts organisation stood as a mere shadow of its former self. With a legacy spanning 47 years, it had once been the torchbearer of darting excellence. But the perfect storm of financial troubles, leadership controversies and growing discontent had taken their toll. The bleeding was slow, yet relentless. The final nail had been driven into the coffin. Don't forget to hit the bullseye so you never miss out on any of our amazing darts videos. See you next time.